I found one of the most shocking things that I found thus far in all the inspections that I've performed for people so far. And here we are on the roof of an architecture firm in this beautiful space that this person lives in. I'm gonna show you the first thing right here. Stay back. Radio frequency energy may exceed exposure limits. This person just found out recently that they have cancer and they've actually been helping their son for the last year or so who's 25 who also has cancer. And I'm gonna show you what is behind this building and I'm just, I'm really, really shocked. So here we go, here's this door and we're gonna just step in here very briefly because it's really intense in here. So these, this is cell phone towers. Look at that. It's just, it's unbelievable. And again, I'll show you the meter. Sitting here right in these people's, right outside these people's driveway. Now this is also extremely hard to believe. I've now driven down almost a full block, right next to the telephone pole, down a full block, and check this out. I'm gonna show you the meter reading. And the meter is still up at two and three volts per meter in the red on the left-hand side at the peak. Benjamin Rebus has worked on cell phone towers for 14 years. It physically burned my hand. The burn is a work injury you can see. What you see here is what I would call an everyday crime. Other problems he said caused by the towers aren't as easy to spot. Depression, and I got I get headaches from time to time, and uh, mood swings and stuff. Well, here's what I consider in my personal opinion, another crime scene. And I don't think I'm being dramatic saying this. Here's the cell phone tower. I want you to notice where this is located. Literally in the parking lot, right next to these stores. There's human beings working in these stores and eating in these restaurants all day long. And there's a cell phone tower right there. That's hitting a thousand microwatts per square meter, depending on the pulses that are coming off the tower. I'm across the street, as you can see. I wouldn't even want to guess what the radiation exposure is inside of those stores there. And I have the meter set on average, which you can see here, it says RMS, which means microwatts per square meter average power density. This is 800, 900 microwatts per square meter. It goes even higher. Once again, biological effects start at 3.4 to 6 microwatts per square meter average power density. 52-year-old Sanjay Kasliwal is counting the days now. Incurable brain cancer due to radiation from mobile phone towers in his neighborhood has reduced life to little more. His brother has been termed luckier sent to the US for brain surgery, but both of them know hope fades. I have written to all possible government offices to find out what sort of control are they doing or what sort of an audit is being done. and. Uh, it seems everything falls on deaf ears, nobody is concerned. Experts say the area the two men live in faces radiation from mobile phone towers equivalent to living in a microwave oven 19 minutes a day. Uh, see the levels were somewhere between minus 18 to minus 20 to 20 dBm also over here and the radiation levels are very high for prolonged exposure. For almost about 100 times higher than what is you know recommended for continuous safe exposure and uh, there are two cancer cases which have been reported in this house that even a dog has got cancer. It's kind of interesting when cell phone tower workers are telling you that they have headaches, that they have brain cancer, that they have all these health issues throughout the day where they get these headaches or blurry vision. Why would so many of these guys have these seemingly often problems like this? It, it, you would think that um, if there was nothing really bad about cell phone towers that obviously those who would work on these towers would be fine. But instead you hear something quite different 
and with the the readouts with this a thousand plus microwatts per square meter measured near one of these cell phone towers when it only takes about 10 microwatts to even have any effect on you so we're talking a hundred times the the threshold for where it actually can cause harm to a person so it's very interesting you know some people have mentioned that when they've lived near cell phone towers that they've they've had uh, headaches and depression and, and this is also something that these these tower workers have mentioned as well having even depression from doing this so this also begs the question of whether or not these patents I've shown in a previous video really are something that is being used on some of these towers to where it can actually influence you these frequencies that they use can cause certain types of emotions and certain types of feelings at certain frequencies it, it makes you even potentially depressed feeling and in other frequencies it can cause you to even become enraged and why is there so many cell phone towers and in many cases these cell phone towers if you put your cell phone directly towards them in the range and it doesn't do anything you go look up the cell phone tower online it says it's for this certain particular company let's say sprint you go and take your phone over to it and you have no bars this doesn't even make any sense or even have some of these cell phone towers multiples in a row why would you have so many in a row what what's the relevance of that it's supposed to be covering certain square footage allegedly but instead we have them lined up near a highway why would they be doing that especially not very far apart so it makes you kind of wonder what they're really for here to broadcast the entire earth it takes two kilowatts two hair dryers now a microwave oven uses a thousand watts or one kilowatt Here's the damage one kilowatt can be done by somebody when they take a magnetron out of a microwave and turn it into a ray gun. This is just a small example of a low-tech weapon running on 1000 watts. Then you have these things here, these huge towers of death. Now each row in this tower, an array, or a set of dishes or rectennas or whatever you want to call them, is connected to a cable with a maximum power output of 300,000 watts or 300 kilowatts that's 300 microwave ovens we base that conservative estimate based on the gauge of the cabling that's running up to one of these arrays they're estimated at 300,000 watts per cable those aren't fiber optic cables running up to those arrays it's a thick copper gauge transmission line quality cable running up those towers now if there's 10 cables that's like three megawatts of power and these cables are out there to output power to the magnetron not for data transfer that's an important point these cell phone towers are weaponized there's no other reason to have this much power running up the cables it isn't for data transfer now FCC regulations limit normal transmission per array to about 400 watts. To put that into perspective, one watt from your phone can go 25 miles to the nearest tower. A 1000 watt magnetron on a stick can blow shit up. And these towers have a 300 kilowatt power line running up to each rectenna. And who knows, there could be an amplifier at the top of these towers that steps up the power even more. The point is here, ladies and gentlemen, is that these companies like Lucent and Google could turn up the juice at any time and nuke a town. They could nuke the entire country without any warning, without anybody being able to protect themselves. They could cook them like a boiling frog in the middle of the night. This infrastructure is not only in place, it's built up with multiple levels of redundancy. Every big city has thousands of these death towers. And all that needs to happen is for an AI from Google or whoever to come in and nuke everybody at once and take over. Who out there remembers that movie Terminator? Well, Google doesn't have to send a Terminator to every door or launch a nuclear strike. It can just turn on these cell phone towers to maximum and cook everybody within the city limits within an hour. And then just send in the Terminators to mop up the countryside. 